So we're going to be checking out Tornadoes Are Scary. I've had a lot of comments about checking out tornadoes. It's something unheard of in the UK. So I can't even picture what it'd be like to have a tornado. But yeah, I, I don't know much about tornadoes. So I am so interested in checking out this video. It should be really good. Just before we jump into it, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit the subscribe button. It massively helps out the channel we're growing. Let's just jump in and press play. Picture this scenario. You're at home, it's in the late evening. You're just hanging out, watching TV. What? When you suddenly hear a clap of thunder off in the distance, you get up to look out the window mm -hmm. and you notice dark clouds to the west, slowly approaching. The TV program you were watching becomes interrupted by a local weather broadcast warning what? of the potential of tornadoes. No. Is this, is that how it happens? You get warnings like this. And suddenly, the tornado sirens sound. Mad. This is like you're going to war. You grab your family, your pets, and you find a safe space. Perhaps it's in the basement, perhaps it's in a closet, or an uh, interior room. The cat. You seek shelter, and you begin to hear a low rumble sound. Almost like a tr You gotta make sure you get the cat down. Because the cat don't know what's going on. Are you, or, or, or are they smart cats? These cats might be smart and they know they know the siren. So they're like, yeah, let's get down there. Rain slowly approaching, getting louder and louder and louder. Mm. That's mad. All this happens. Yeah, tornadoes are terrifying. Like more so than other natural disasters. Floods are actually way deadlier, way more dangerous than tornadoes, but a flood mm. warning doesn't really strike the fear in you like a tornado warning does. Volcanoes? Volcanoes are crazy, explosive, scary. massive, dangerous, but they don't creep up to your doorstep in the middle of the night. There is a horror-like aspect to tornadoes, and that is exactly what this video is about. Halloween is coming up and I figured it'd be a good time to just talk about the terrifying nature of tornadoes. We'll discuss some of the scariest images, videos, wow. and experiences in today's video. Let's get into it. So let me know if you've had tornadoes in your area as well. I have made this comparison on this channel before, but tornadoes really are a real life version of a monster. I mean, a mm. scary cloud that descends and takes out anything in its path, it sounds almost unbelievable. If we lived in a world where tornadoes didn't exist, there would still be tornado lore and myths, similar to ball lightning and ghosts in our own society. Even the cone shape of these things is pretty creepy. Just check out the infamous dead man walking photo. Creepy legs and a scythe like oh, arm. Oh, wow. I mean, it's the Reaper. Other natural disasters may be deadlier and more dangerous, but only a tornado seems alive. 089 had this to say about tornadoes on Reddit. I like to say that they're the closest things to Lovecraftian Eldritch abominations that we have in real life. They do feel alive because they're so dynamic. They're big enough to inspire awe at their size, but small enough to be recognized as a single object. Mm. Hurricanes are much larger, but they're just big storm systems. Tornadoes are things. Big, ghostly things moving across the ground and stretching high into the sky. Wow. Tornadoes, honestly, really aren't that different from Michael Myers in the Halloween franchise. A dangerous, dark, oh, wow. and mysterious figure what that slowly makes it? its way towards you. He doesn't run, he just slowly moves towards you. When people in real life take shelter from a tornado, they often hide in interior closets, just like in Halloween. Mm. The 1996 made-for-TV movie Night of the Twisters takes place during Halloween. Now the event that it's based off of, which is the 1980 Grand Island Nocturnal Tornadoes, that actually mm. takes place in June. But the movie takes place near Halloween because it's adding like a horror-like factor to it. What? Instead of monsters coming for them in the middle of the night, it's a bunch of tornadoes. Night tornadoes are usually referred to as nocturnal tornadoes. And I wanna just- I just gotta say, night tornadoes, can you, you can't see them. You can't see them coming at you. I've seen storm chaser videos where they can see them and, and they're, they're going around them and stuff. But at night, you can't see them, no? It's, it's, so, so in the middle of the night, can the sirens go off, the TV thing, and you just wake up to those sirens? That just seems so scary. That seems crazy. 
discuss their history, starting with that tragic night in Grand Island, Nebraska. On June 3rd, 1980, Grand Island, Nebraska went through a very unique meteorological event. On that night, Grand Island was hit by seven different tornadoes in the span of three hours. Seven? Between 8 p.m. Wow. and 11 p.m. All in all, five would lose their lives and over 200 would be injured. The experience was very traumatic, not just because you had tornadoes destroying your community, but because they came at night. This is the only known tornado photo captured from that night, and it's one of the creepiest tornado photos I've ever seen. It shows the second tornado to the left and the third tornado to the right. This tornado would end up injuring wow. 40 individuals, but it was actually the fifth tornado from that night that took five lives. Many families on that night had horrifying experiences. The whole event kind of came out of nowhere. It was a Tuesday night. Many parents were away from their kids at different events. So we had a lot of kids at home freaking out because the weather was changing so rapidly. Now the movie that we talked about earlier that was based off of this event was actually a film adaptation of the book Night of the Twisters by Ivy Ruckman. Here's a book right here. Look at that. Scared kid. Because it's a scary experience. Nocturnal tornadoes are twice as deadly as their daytime counterparts, even though they only make up a very small percentage of tornadoes overall. There mm. have been countless terrifying nocturnal tornadoes. Some of the more prominent tornadoes include the Barnveld, Wisconsin F5 that hit at 1241 AM on June 8th, 1984. According to the Weather Service office in Madison, Wisconsin, the lighting was so intense during this tornado that there was actually a strobe effect to it. That event caused oh, wow. 200 injuries and nine fatalities. One very recent nocturnal tornado event that comes to mind is the March 3rd, 2020 Nashville, Tennessee tornado outbreak. The strongest tornado from that outbreak was the Cookville EF4, wow, which look had at 19 the fatalities and 87 injuries. Other That's, notable night tornadoes include insane. the Greensburg, Kansas tornado of May 8th, 2007, the April 1998 Birmingham, Alabama tornado, and the downtown Lubbock, Texas tornado in 1970. Dixie Alley tends to be hit by some really bad nocturnal tornadoes. And on top of that, Dixie Alley is actually very hilly. The terrain can easily hide tornadoes, just making it even scarier. It's a very dangerous place. Similar in a way it's to mad. nocturnal tornadoes are rain-wrapped tornadoes. Like nocturnal tornadoes, you can't actually see them, but instead of them being shrouded by darkness, they're shrouded by rain. Rain-wrapped tornadoes are extremely dangerous. In fact, the deadliest tornado since the 1950s, the 2011 Joplin EF5, was rain-wrapped. So I spent some time online Mad. looking for the creepiest and scariest tornado photos, and I came across this. This photo to me just kind of freaks wow. me out. The tornado is looming in the background of a nice suburban street, and it kind of has a liminal feel to it. This is from the 2019 Dallas EF3, which actually happened on October 20th, so 11 days before Halloween. Thankfully, this tornado took no fatalities. There was also a video captured of the event, and it also has some pretty eerie vibes to it. These are scary, you can only isn't see they? the tornado when the lightning flashes. Oh, freaks me out. Another creepy photo comes from June 1995 in Dimmit, Texas. This tornado was only an F2, but the time of day, the darkness of the photo, the way it's like a silhouette, the headlights from the car, almost looking like it's trying to outrun it. The low res quality really makes the photo more eerie. I think we should talk about that. I want to talk about how lower res... But wait, can you outrun a tornado? How, how fast does a tornado move across? I'm just thinking that, yeah, it's, it's going to be going so fast that you can't outrun it. I, I wouldn't think if I was driving in a car that I could outrun it. I, I, I think the fear factor would, would step in. Videos and photos just seem a little bit eerier than modern day videos. Vintage tornado videos just have a creepier vibe to them. Mm. In fact, the older you go, the creepier they are. Photos from the early 20th century can look very strange wow. and dark. Mm. They've Often got that videos creepy before feel. 2000 just seem a lot creepier because of that low resolution. It makes the tornado more mysterious. Mm. It gives it a darker vibe. This Lindsburg, Kansas video from September 25th, 1973 is a prime example. Look at the way that it moves and dances by the water tower. That's scary. Going back 16 more years to June 20th, 1957, we have the Fargo, North Dakota F5. So F5 is the top, yeah? This is some of the earliest video capture of a tornado. 
Vintage safety videos can also have a dark vibe to them. I remember back in school, usually in the spring, we would all get together for an assembly to watch some sort of tornado safety video. Some of them were pretty cheesy, but sometimes they kind of freaked me out. You a classic this. example is the 1976 film Countdown to Survival. One section in hmm. particular is pretty intense. Check it out. And you watch this as a kid. Oh, that's just mad. Pretty wild. So I want to break down the entire tornado experience. Every part of the experience has different factors that really build tension. I've broken it down mm. into several phases, and we're going to start with the first phase, the anticipation phase. I think this stage yeah. usually starts off with your county being issued a tornado watch. If I heard a tornado Perhaps is coming. you're at work, school, or in the car, and you suddenly hear that EAS warning. Definitely a startling this sound, is crazy. but it's startling for a reason. It's there to get your attention. After you hear that EAS warning, it just kind of sits in the back of your mind. This Most crazy. tornado watches are just false alarms, but they do build a small layer of anticipation and anxiety. Often hmm. before a large thunderstorm, there's a certain vibe in the atmosphere, and it can be kind of difficult to explain. I mean, it might even be sunny out and nice out, but there's yeah. just an eerie feeling. Some people complain about aches in their elbows or their knees. This is where that saying, it's always calm before the storm comes from. You just know something's off. Eventually the atmosphere begins to produce large cumulonimbus clouds that further form into large supercells. The this elements are in place anxiety. for a dangerous storm. Now we're moving on to phase two, the approach. What? It's getting later in the evening and the sky to the west is extremely dark. You watch as the impending storm approaches. At this point, the leaves on the trees begin to turn over and the birds quit chirping. All the animals, they know something is up. They know something is coming. Usually you're sitting in your living room with the local weather on, the meteorologist is monitoring the situation, and lightning flickers off in the distance. You frequently walk back and forth from the TV to the back window to look at the clouds in the approaching thunderstorm. You may even see I a shell cloud this. or an Arcus cloud, and sometimes you might even see scud clouds, which are these little long finger looking things that stick down from the Arcus cloud. Scud stands for scattered cumulus under deck. Many people actually believe them to be tornadoes, but there's no rotation, so they're not tornadoes. They are just SLCs, scary looking clouds. Just a false alarm. The mm. meteorologist on TV then notices something alarming on radar, a hook echo or a radar indication of rotation. Okay. Suddenly, a tornado warning is issued for your area, and the tornado sirens sound. Similar to the earlier EAS sound, they mm. sound pretty creepy. Mm. I actually think that this That's moment scary. is a large part of what makes tornadoes so scary. The dual tone of the tornado slash air raid slash civil defense sirens just has a creepy dissonance to it. Different tornado sirens oh, create yeah. different sounds, but the 810 port to me sounds the most eerie. Take a listen. Mm. That's like a war like a siren. creepy choir or perhaps a trumpet sound in the end days of Revelation. The shape of these things is also pretty creepy. There are many eerie vibes in the approach stage of a tornado. So let me know in the comments, if you got an air raid siren in your area that sounds a little bit creepy, have you, uh, or have you heard it? Yeah, right, that, that's the one I want to know. Have you, have you heard the air raid siren in your area and is it a little bit creepy? That's, that's crazy. It's wild but there's one video that captures it very well. This video was captured by Rodalco2007, and it just does a great job of capturing the atmosphere before a tornado hits. This was taken before the infamous May 22nd, 2011 Joplin EF5. These right. storm chasers are currently located on Rangeline Road, and all you can see is a blanket of darkness behind these doors. Mm. But that's actually a massive tornado. Here's the same street, the same stores, a few hours after the tornado passed. These guys barely dodged a bullet. And what's even creepier is that they're stuck at a red light. I wow. mean, oh my gosh. Can you imagine being stuck at a red light as a massive EF5 tornado is approaching you? I'm Terrifying. going through the red light. Phase one and phase two are pretty common in Tornado Alley and Dixie Alley. My own city usually gets about two tornado warnings a year. In fact, I had one yesterday. Now the next phase of actually oh, encountering a tornado and going through that experience 
is thankfully pretty unlikely. I have personally never been directly hit by a tornado, but many people have, and they have lived to tell the tale of the experience. The most common That's description wild. of such a terrifying event is the freight train sound that the tornado makes as it approaches. Uh, and I heard it. They say it sounds like a train boy, it sure does. Can you imagine sheltering in a closet or a basement in the dark and hearing a freight train-like sound slowly getting closer and closer? It would be terrible. There That's are many wild. difficult videos to watch on YouTube of people hiding in closets or bathrooms and hearing that awful sound of their houses getting destroyed. After the event, they walk out and see nothing left. One of the more famous videos is the Parkersburg graduation party. They see the tornado approaching, they all take shelter, and then when it hits, it's just... A horrifying sound. This is why many tornado victims often suffer from a condition known as lapsophobia or the fear of tornadoes. Mm. It is a more extreme I version of astrophobia, which is the fear of thunderstorms. Tornadoes are a force of nature that need to be taken seriously. But should you actually fear tornadoes? And what should you do if one is coming towards you? Well, you shouldn't necessarily fear tornadoes. I think a healthy yeah. amount of fear is, of course, good. Oh, that will keep yeah. you safe. But the odds of you actually being in a tornado are extremely slim. In fact, there's people that have lived in Oklahoma or Kansas or Iowa or Alabama their entire lives, and they have never seen a tornado. If you take proper safety okay. precautions, you're going to be fine. General rule of thumb is the center part of the lowest level in your home or building. Obviously, if you have a basement, you want to go to the basement. But mm. if you don't have a basement, you want to be in an interior room, away from windows. Trailer parks account for 40% of tornado fatalities. So if you live in a trailer, make sure you have a plan. Make sure that you know of maybe a central building that is like legit bolted Wah. to the ground that you can go to. Honestly, at the end of the day, get yourself a weather app and turn on the emergency notifications in your app to make sure that you actually get notified if something is coming. Every single time I'm in a tornado warning, I get the alert on my phone probably like two minutes before the sirens go off. Oh, so you definitely two minutes. want that. All right. Stay safe. Be two minutes ain't long. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. What an interesting video. Really enjoyed checking that one out. That showed me so much that I didn't know about tornadoes. Wow. So scary. I can't imagine what it'd be like to live in an area with tornadoes. That is insane. They are scary. But thank you so much for checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, please do hit the subscribe button. It massively helps out the channel growing. But for now, I will see you on the next reaction.